gallons of water. So I've spoken with the governors of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. Uh, they're prepared. We're prepared. We're working very well in conjunction with the governors. I'd like to ask uh, Brock Long, our administrator, has done so well for us in uh, Texas and Florida. We have something it could very well be very similar to Texas in the sense that it's tremendous amounts of water. Texas was the one that had, I would say, to this point, Brock, probably more water than we've ever seen in a storm or a hurricane. And it went out for seconds and thirds. We've never seen anything like it. Uh, but FEMA, as you know, did a fantastic job, and a fantastic job also in Florida. And I'd like to ask Brock if you would to just say a few words to the media as to uh, where it is now, what's going to be happening, and how well prepared we are. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, unfortunately, uh, Hurricane Florence is setting up to be a devastating event to the Carolinas and potentially Virginia as well. So, um, as you can see, they're, forecast, they're forecasting a major landfalling storm, Category 3 or 4 storm at landfall. Uh, the biggest hazard that we're worried about is, is storm surge. That's the primary driver of the evacuations that are underway by the, the states of North Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, Virginia right now. But as this system comes in and makes landfall uh, during the weekend, it's forecast to stall out, lose its steering, its steering currents, and drop copious amounts of rainfall. Unfortunately, um, the remnants of Gordon passed through uh, the Mid-Atlantic over the weekend and do dropped a, a lot of rain saturating rivers. So Hurricane Florence, as it comes in and puts uh, anywhere between 20 and 30 inches more in isolated areas, uh, could create uh, a, a lot of inland flooding. So right now, sir, we're supporting the governors with achieving uh, their life safety uh, evacuation movements. Uh, we're, we're focused on mass care and sheltering, and then we'll be focused on helping them to execute their response and recovery goals. What are the chances that it veers off cost and, you know, the the, uh, the hit won't be so direct. What are the chances of that? Uh, unfortunately, I believe there's quite a bit of certainty in the track forecast because the, the forward speed is picking up. It's getting faster. And when systems do that, the track forecast becomes a lot more accurate. Uh, and uh, I think the expectation needs to be set with the citizens in this area that if you've been asked to leave, get out of the areas that are going to flood and get into a facility that can withstand the winds. Um, let's set the expectations as well. This has an opportunity of being a very devastating storm. The power is going to be off for weeks. You're going to be displaced uh, from your home in the coastal areas, and there will be flooding in, in, in the inland areas as well. So these are going to be statewide events. The hazards will be statewide. Okay. You want to just show us this one then? Yeah, this is a... Uh, this is a uh, seven-day rainfall graphic. Uh, as you can see, uh, the pink areas and, and the purple areas indicate 20 inches. That's a mean area rainfall. That's an average rainfall amount. But you may see isolated amounts greater uh, into the 30-inch range uh, over Virginia, uh, the, the, the central portions of Virginia and West Virginia. And these impacts, are they're going to be through the Mid-Atlantic. So we're coordinating not only uh, with South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, but other Mid-Atlantic states all the way to Delaware. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, and it has been great coordination. I have to tell you, the states have been terrific. Everybody's working together. Uh, the governors and all of their representatives have been absolutely fantastic. And FEMA, there's nobody like your people. I mean, they, they, what they're doing is incredible. Do you have any questions for Secretary Nielsen or for Brock Long, please? What Anybody? lesson do we uh, take from what happened in Puerto, Puerto Rico? How do we apply the lessons we took from Puerto Rico? Well, I, I think Puerto Rico was uh, incredibly successful. Uh, Puerto Rico was actually our toughest one of all because it's an island, so you, just, you can't truck things onto it. Everything's by boat. Uh, we moved a hospital into Puerto Rico, a tremendous uh, military hospital in the form of a ship. You know that? Uh, and I actually think, and the governor has been very nice, and if you ask the governor, he'll tell you what a great job. Uh, I think probably the hardest one we had by far was Puerto Rico because of the island nature. And I actually think uh, it was one of the best jobs that's ever been done with respect to what this is all about. Puerto Rico got hit not with one hurricane, but with two. And the problem with Puerto Rico is their electric grid and their electric uh, generating plant was dead before the storms ever hit. It was in very bad shape. It was in bankruptcy. Uh, had no money. It was largely, you know, it was largely closed. And when the storm hit, they had no electricity, essentially, before the storm. And when the storm hit, that took it out entirely. 
the job that FEMA and law enforcement and everybody did working along with the governor in Puerto Rico, I think, was tremendous. I think that Puerto Rico was an incredible, unsung success. Uh, Texas, we have been given A-pluses for. Uh, Florida, we've been given A-pluses for. I think, in a certain way, the best job we did was Puerto Rico, but nobody would understand that. I mean, that's — it's harder to understand. It was a very hard — very hard thing to do uh, because of the fact they had no electric. Before the storms hit, it was dead, as you probably know. So uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, receptivity, a lot of thanks for the job we've done in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was very important. And by the way, speaking of Puerto Rico, uh, and they're going to be affected pretty much pretty soon by something else that's on its way. Is that right? Potentially, Hurricane Isaac uh, right now is tracking south of the island, but we are um, — we have several thousand people inside Puerto Rico right now working on long-term recovery that have shifted to the response mode to monitor as Isaac passes to the we south. We do not want to see Hurricane Isaac hit Puerto Rico. That's all we need. But we have a big hurricane out there, and it's sort of skirting along Puerto Rico and the edge of Puerto Rico. That would not be good. Mr. President, how much money do you think you'll need? How much money do you think you'll need for recovery efforts to this next hurricane? And do you have that? Well, we have it currently. Uh, we're going to obviously these are all unanticipated, so we'll go to Congress. Congress will be very generous because we have no choice. Uh, this is the United States, and it's uh, whether it's. Uh, Texas or Florida or, frankly, if it's uh, Virginia, because Virginia looks like it's very much in the path. Maryland, by the way, could be affected, very seriously affected, just to add. Uh, it's a little bit outside of the path. Uh, and then, of course, South Carolina and North Carolina. I think that uh, any amounts of money, whatever it takes, we're going to do. But we're already set up. We have tremendous trucking systems. We have food systems. We have a lot of uh, — a lot of contractors waiting, but for the most part, it's been handled by FEMA, and also we've coordinated locally. Uh, we have uh, food for days. We have emergency equipment and generators for many days. We should be in great shape. Now, I've also heard it could be 21 and 22 inches. If you can imagine what that is, 22 inches of rain, uh, it, it is not something that we've had. Certainly, we've never had this on the East Coast. So, but I think we're very well prepared, very well set up, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I think this storm right here is very similar to Hurricane Hugo, and it's almost like a combination of Hurricane Hugo in 89 and Hurricane Floyd in 1999. Uh, but look, successful disaster response and recovery is one that's locally executed, state managed, and federally supported. So what FEMA is doing is pre-positioning the federal government's assets to support each one of those governors that are about to be impacted with achieving their response and recovery goals. And that's the way emergency management and disaster response works best. I also think I'd like I'd like to point out that what we learned last year is that we have got to build a true culture of preparedness within our citizens here in, in America. This is a partnership, and it takes anything from neighbor helping neighbor all the way to the federal government when it comes to uh, correctly responding and recovering. Minister, can we ask you about preparations for Colorado and D.C.? What, what's being done right now? To sure, great. That's a great question. So FEMA doesn't own the power, uh, the power grids in any one of these states. A lot of them are owned by the private industry. So what we have are business emergency operations center calls. We're, uh, we're, we're concentrating with the private vendors to make sure that they have strong mutual aid uh, programs in place, and we set up incident support bases to help stage uh, power crews coming in from other states. And largely, it's FEMA's job to get out of the way to make sure that the private power companies can get into these areas uh, to set up their grid. We don't own it. We don't own it. But unlike Puerto Rico, you have very strong power companies. They're very powerful, very well managed in the sense that uh, they have they have tremendous overcapacity. Uh, they are going to do a great job. They also have made uh, contracts with other power companies that won't be affected, and they're going to be coming in. Just to answer your question, they'll be coming in to the various states that will be affected. They're going to be coming in very strongly, and they're already lining up. They'll be here probably, for the most part, tomorrow uh, or shortly before the storm hits. So they're going to be in great shape. These are uh, really states that have very, very strong power authorities. What's your message, Mr. President? people who might not have evacuated yet? Well, that's very risky. I mean, uh, again, we've never seen anything quite like this on the East Coast, at least. And if it turns out to be as bad — you know, we, we go out there. You have, you have people that actually go fly through these storms. 
Uh, these are very brave people, but they fly through. And from what I'm hearing, the sights that they're seeing have not been seen on the East Coast before. So I would say everybody should get out. I mean, you have to listen to your local authorities. And whether you're upland or downland, but depending on where you are, you have to listen and you have to get out. If they want you to get out, because it's going to be impossible to have people get in there, whether it's law enforcement or FEMA or anybody else, once this thing hits, it's going to be really, really bad along the coast. Okay? Anything else? Do you believe Rob Trump Porter and uh, Gary Cohn's denials today? Uh, well, you shouldn't be talking about that right now because it doesn't matter. But I really appreciate their statement. Their statement was excellent. Uh, and they both sent out beautiful, which shows that the book is just a piece of fiction. Thank you very much. I think thank we're very well prepared. And thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, trade talks are coming along very well. Uh, we're dealing with China, as you know. Oh, it's, uh, we've taken a very tough stand on China, I would say, to put it mildly. Uh, and with Canada, they want to make a deal very much. Me, if we make it, that's good. If we don't make it, that's okay, too. Uh, Canada wants to make a deal. We'll see if we can get them into the deal we already have with Mexico. Uh, I think the deal with Canada is coming along very well. We've all been dealing in good faith. Okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.